Hey, and welcome back. Um, in a series of kind of extensions of, of linear regression models, we just finished up talking about polynomial models and integration terms um, <clears throat> and how those kind of progressively allow us to expand uh, what we can do with linear models. Um, and now I want to turn a little bit and, and talk about uh, a class of models that, that literally, in their name, they, they generalize the idea of linear models. And specifically, this is a class of models that is aimed at relaxing the assumption about what probability distribution is used to describe the data. Remember, that one of the classic assumptions of, of uh, linear models is, is not only is, are the models linear, but that the error follows a normal distribution. So generalized linear models are going to keep the assumption that the model is linear, or at least some transform is linear. Uh, but then relax the assumption that the errors have to be Gaussian. So probably the best way to explain this is with an example. And one of the, the uh, most common form of generalized linear models that gets the most use uh, that you may have seen already is the idea of logistic regression. So consider an example like this figure on the top here. Um, what if your data just consists of zeros and ones? trues and falses, yeses and no, something that's cat, you know, uh, categorized as a, a, a sense fundamentally some sort of true, false, zero, one response. And, and lots of things uh, in terms of data gets categorized this way. Uh, survival data is a great example. You know, you, you don't have, you're not fractionally alive. You know, you're alive, you're not, you know, mortality, uh, any sort of disaster or, or event driven. Um, response variable is often has this, this Boolean encoding. And when you're look, working with this type of data, uh, often what you're fundamentally interested in is, is trying to ask questions about the probability. Uh, and so if you're asking questions about the probability of uh, being uh, in one of these two classes, yes or no, true or false, as a function of some set of covariates and how they change that probability, uh, you're also you know, putting restrictions on what makes sense as a model. And so you're, you know, remember that probabilities can't be negative, uh, they can't be bigger than one. And so clearly linear models rarely meet that, you know, straight line rarely meets that assumption. So how do we deal with this? We deal with this in, in two ways. So one of the things we're gonna do is think about uh, <clears throat> what's called a link function. And a link function is a function that transforms uh, your linear model from one domain into another domain. And in this case, we're thinking about uh, the idea of a, a logit function as something that transforms uh, something in the uh, linear model domain, so I just highlighted this beta 1 plus beta 2 x, uh, transformed uh, through a function that transforms it into this probability domain. So it's a, in the, this case, it's, it's, you know, you can, a link function could be any function that transforms you from the continuous plus minus infinity range to uh, the 0, 1 range of what makes sense as probability. In that sense, you know, uh, many of your link functions are going to have besides just the logistic, are going to have this kind of S-shaped uh, response because anything on the x-axis needs to be transformed into this uh, zero rent one range. So, so how does this work and how do we actually do this? Before we dive in, let's just see what happens if we you know, uh, apply the philosophy of if, if, uh, if all we have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So if all we have is linear regression, uh, what do we get? Okay, so here in this case, I simulated data where this golden yellow line is actually with the true model, simulated data according to that model. And then what happens if I try to fit a linear regression? Um, well, you know, it could be worse. You know, it, it goes through the middle of the data. Uh, it, it does kind of split the difference. Obviously, since it's a straight line, it can't capture the curvature. Uh, and over a limited domain from, you know, about minus two, 
to about six, you could at least make a prediction that's not insane. Um, but beyond that, you are you know, literally, you know, predicting a probability greater than one or a probability less than zero. Um, also noting that the, the our regression models uh, interval estimate the Compton interval does not actually contain the true model. Um, but you know, we can fit it. And because it still does a better chance than a flat line, it's still statistically significant. Uh, but when we look at the residuals, oh my gosh, this is probably the worst uh, residual plot we've ever seen because all of the data falls in two lines because it's only in a zero one. Uh, and we're just have the, we only have the option of switching between those two states. Uh, our normal QQ plot, honestly, it's surprising it isn't worse, considering that our data can only take on two states. Uh, our assessment of constant variance, uh, you know, was probably more artistic than anything else. You know, we have this kind of giant W shape corresponding to taking these two options, zero and one, you know, taking their absolute value and uh, taking their square root, which adds that curvature. Uh, but clearly variance is not constant. And again, leverage is kind of crazy. Okay, so if, if linear regression doesn't work and we want to kind of get to a function that's not a straight line, you know, I, I guess I would argue that the challenge here goes beyond just uh, switching to a curved function, but fundamentally switching distributions because, you know, fundamentally the, the probability of predicting these exact states zero and one are going to be very rare from the normal distribution, regardless of what you choose as the parameters. Uh, you need a better description of that process. And so one of the fundamental changes that goes into what, making logistic regression logistic regression is a, a switch from the Gaussian error distribution to one that is a better description of this kind of coin flipping process of an event driven outcome that you can only take on a heads or tails true or false state. And whenever we start talking about this kind of coin flipping behavior of only having these kind of Boolean outcomes, we very naturally kind of find ourselves thinking about uh, a binomial distribution. So our major changes here, uh, first, y is no longer Gaussian, but rather follows a binomial distribution. So we're thinking about, we're talking about some probability so we're going to write a model that describes that probability p. Uh, each individual data point only represents essentially one coin flip, so it can only come out one way or the other. It can only come out heads or tails, true or false, lived or died. Uh, so we have a continuous state, and each, each individual observation is treated like one outcome of one coin flip with a probability varying as a function. Uh, and the second part, like I said before, is this idea of a functional form that has to be bound over the domain of this distribution. And so we have a link function that translates from the linear domain, plus or minus infinity, to the zero one domain. There's lots of things that have that property, the most common being this logit function. And logit is named after it representing the log odds. And so odds would be you know, probability of something versus one minus the probability. So, you know, we talk about, you know, something having a three to one odds or a four to one odds, uh, something like that. And so we're now taking the log of that and that transforms things out over this domain. And again, this is just showing what the standard logit model without any uh, covariates looks like. So uh, important things to note, uh, when you're lit, the intercept, of your uh, linear model, you know, when it predicts zero as the response, corresponds to 50% probability. Uh, positive values correspond to greater than 50%. Negative values correspond to less than 50%. And it approaches zero and one asymptotically. Um, <clears throat> cool. Okay. So 
that's the general idea of logistic regression. It's a, it's, we're transforming a mod, we're gonna write a model for the probability uh, in, ter uh, in terms of a logit transform. So we'll have, you know, some probability P and logit P is some linear model. And then we're gonna use this binomial distribution. Uh, this idea, it's important to note, is I kind of alluded at the beginning, is a special case of a more broad set of problems called generalized linear models, where we can use you know a wider range of probability distributions other than just uh, the Gaussian, and we can use a wider range of link functions other than just uh, the the logit. But the general idea of generalized linear models is is again use of a non-normal distribution and then use of a link function to relate the domain of that distribution to the domain, to the linear domain of our linear model.